today we have Paul Grant here from MarketStar. He's the CRO. So as the Chief Revenue Officer, he leads all revenue growth activities at MarketStar, including day-to-day and strategic direction of business development, uh, corporate manage- marketing, and large strategic accounts. He's a Utah native. He lives here in uh, northern Utah and enjoys traveling, camping, skiing, um, music, fly fishing, hunting, backpacking, and hiking. So he is in the perfect place. Um, after he finishes up his remarks, we are going to have Brian Van Vliet from Pinterest speak for a second, and he's just going to talk about Pinterest, and then he's going to announce the finalists from the case competitions from today. So that is it. We're going to turn the time over, give a round of applause for Paul Grant as he gets started. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me, number one? Is this mic on? You hear me all right? We got a great group here today. This is exciting. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be part of the sales competition uh, here at Utah State University. Uh, thank you for all the other schools that have come to participate. This, ex- this is an exciting day. So, how many fishermen do we have in the room here, or fisherwomen for that matter? When I look out the window and I see these beautiful uh, yellow leaves on the trees. It's tough to be inside this day, so I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, When you have a focus Friday and you have the ability to take off and do other things, I think it's great to see this room filled up uh, with students that are focused on expanding their career, learning new things, and developing their skills. So I'm going to jump in a little bit, and I'm going to try to make this fairly humanized and let you uh, know a little bit about me and why am I relevant. I think that should be a question in your mind is why am I relevant. It's great that MarketStar is here and we're a sponsor with Pinterest of this competition, but you know, why am I relevant? I like to keep things simple. I like to keep things human. I think that's a great touch in sales and has driven a lot of success for me over the years. But you know, first and foremost, uh, I'm a family man. Uh, I'm a husband and I'm a father, and that's really what... I find greatest success and fulfillment in is, uh, is being a part of a, a family and a part of a group um, that I love and I care for. Uh, I'm an enterprise leader, so I have experience uh, throughout my career in doing different things. Uh, I, was, I started early on at MarketStar uh, when I was attending Weber State, for you uh, Weber State yeah. folks out there, and uh, worked at MarketStar for a couple years and then went to do some other things in my career. Uh, But I had a great opportunity when I was at Weber State to uh, take an internship in Japan for a year through the U.S. Japan Center, which used to be a kind of an economic development, economic trade organization between the U.S. and Japan. And so I went and worked in Japan for a year and had a great experience there that became a huge springboard for me in my career. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about those springboards and kind of gaining experience, expanding your horizons a little bit later. So I'm not going to read through this whole list, but I'm, I'm also a green thumb. I, uh, I actually love to do yard work and stuff like that. All you, I see a whole bunch of people shaking their heads like, what? Um, it's amazing how when you are deep in business and you're crazy busy every day and you're traveling here and there around the world, how fulfilling it is at times to just slow down and maybe mow the lawn and cut some flowers or do some things like that. So I'm a green thumb and I love that. I'm learning focused, so I I firmly believe in continuous education. And you can tell I'm a guy that can't like sit still and sit in a chair either, so hopefully you don't mind if I move around a bit. But I'm learning focused. I love to learn. I love to expand my horizons and learn new things. There's so much content out there and so many things that we can learn from today. So much opportunity for us to take advantage of in terms of learning and development and critical thinking. And you'll hear a little bit more about that. I think the one thing that I also am quite proud of is that I love people. Uh, As as I've heard John Huntsman and some of his talks that he gave, he talked about salespeople have to have a love for people. You have to love people. You have to love being able to engage with people and be around people. And I love people. I love, I may not love speaking in front of great big groups all the time, but I love people and I love interacting with people and what comes from that sales engagement. Um, and people engagement in our careers. So let me move on after I've shown you my little family there, which I'm also very proud of. So let's talk about MarketStar and why MarketStar is relevant. So you may or may not know this. How many of you are familiar with MarketStar and know what we do? Can anybody tell me kind of what we do? Anybody brave enough to take a shot? 
I won't put anybody on the spot. You're all right. So we've been around for 30 years. This is our 30th year, 30th anniversary. Uh, founded in 1998, in, in, actually in Roy, Utah. Uh, Alan Hall is our founder, and he founded it in his basement, if you will. Mortgaged his house a couple of times, I believe, to get this thing off the ground. But we're proud of celebrating 30 years. Only 10% of companies ever make it to their 30th year. So it's a stellar stat, a great place to be for MarketStar. We have about 1,200 employees globally. Um, we're really a very focused B2B sales organization, and we provide sales and services, sales and marketing type services for some major brands similar to Pinterest, Pinterest being one of, one of our very largest clients and most strategic clients in the organization, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, direct sales, indirect sales, so, so through the channel, and then we have a very gro strong growing practice in digital media sales, which many of you here are getting very familiar with uh, through the sales champion competition. So let me spla splash this up here. This is uh, often referred to as our NASCAR slide. A lot of logos, but these are all the great brands that MarketStar provides services for today. So we drive about $6 billion annually through our relationships with our clients. And these are some of those clients that we work for. So you're going to see some logos up there that I, th I think are of great interest to you. Uh, some of these, there's a couple on here that are brand new clients that we're in the process of getting stood up, um, that being Facebook and Asana. So uh, there's something we're super proud of is these brands that we represent. And as I was talking to uh, Professor Bone this morning, he said it's so, so intriguing how MarketStar has brought a piece of Silicon Valley to the Ogden Valley as well. So you can work for these Silicon Valley type brands, low cost of living. We've kind of got our own little niche piece of the valley right here in, in Ogden, Salt Lake, et cetera. A little bit different than Sil the Silicon Slopes area down south, um, but some amazing opportunity for you as salespeople to come and work for these brands. Um, and welcome any questions after the fact on what we do for some of these brands and what opportunities exist, and you'll get uh, an opportunity to talk to many of the folks from MarketStar about that uh, today as well. All right, moving on. So I want to talk about culture. At MarketStar, culture, to us, culture is everything. Uh, we have a performance culture, but we have a people culture. And our people culture is what this company was founded on years ago. And the pillars, these strategic pillars or core values, have remained the same throughout. Uh, we haven't changed these for 30 years, believe it or not. Not a lot of organizations can say that they've held on to their pillars or their values for that long of a time. It's pretty special. So how do we put these pillars or values in action? And I want to share a couple of really cool examples because I think, why is this, why is this relevant to all of you? As you think about MarketStar and what we do, we want you to understand that MarketStar has this unique culture and there's, there's value in what we do and what we give back and we're very proud of that. So I'll, I'll hit a couple of examples here. So our readership program, we read to 1,800 plus students uh, in primary education levels last year. So our employees are given time to step out of the workday, if you will, go visit with these schools and read to kids and help them learn and develop. Uh, we also have a Pack the Pantry program. This Pack the Pantry program is something that uh, warms my heart, if you will. So there's all these um, Title I schools in the Ogden Valley uh, where kids go home on the weekend or they go home for a holiday, Labor Day. You know, we're all excited to go out and play for Labor Day. Well, they're not excited, per se, to go home because there's no food there. There's no food for them to eat. They don't have food and consistent meals on the weekends. One of our employees came forward and said, I have a great idea. His wife happens to be a teacher at one of these schools. And he said, I have a great idea. We could pack these food pantries that they have with food on a regular basis because they actually run out regularly. So we took on an initiative and we're filling on a biannual basis these pantries at many schools inside of the Ogden and Weber school districts with food and food kits for these kids to take home so that they have food when they, when they go home on the weekend or for a holiday. Uh, we've created over 350 jobs in the last year, new jobs uh, through the clients that I showed you before. So some great things that we're doing at MarketStar and to us culture is super important. Uh, we, 
we know and understand that in this world today, having a greater purpose of what we do is super important. And it's super important to our employees. It's what they hang on to. All right, so I'm gonna shift gears now. I'm gonna talk about uh, my perspective, leadership and career imperatives and what those are. So I'm gonna start with people first and always. There's a, a great study uh, from 1992, 94, somewhere in there, uh, by a couple of professors at the Harvard Business School, uh, Len Schlesinger and uh, Jim Haskett, Jim Haskett. And they, they put this theology together, if you will, or this ideology together uh, around the service profit chain. And it is this, if your employees are happy, they make happy customers who, if those things are rock solid and embedded and have a solid foundation, your profits or your value as an organization take care of themselves. So people first. What we do at MarketStar and what I believe firmly as a leader is that people come first. And we should always value people over the bottom line. If we take care of our people, they will take care of our customers and our profits will follow. And this has been proven out over the years. This is still very valid, very relevant, very true. And we see it time and time again in our business and in businesses all around the globe. Zero tolerance for brilliant jerks. Who likes that? Anybody like that? I need a sip of water. I thought I might. Thanks to whoever put this water bottle over here for me. So I was with some Facebook uh, executives two weeks back in Palo Alto. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they shared this great quote with me, zero tolerance for brilliant jerks. And what they, what they meant is, you know what, we don't need to hire people that are brilliant and arrogant and jerks. We have zero tolerance for brilliant jerks. We want brilliant people that are great teammates, that come in, that work well with other people. They're going to bring their, their talents, but they're not going to be arrogant about it. We don't need the jerks in here. I loved it. So I can't remember if this was uh, Cheryl Sandberg or somebody else that shared this um, at this event that we were at, but I, I really grabbed onto it and said, there, there is zero tolerance for brilliant jerks, and we should be like-minded. I know it's a little bit negative, but at the same time, be a good people person. Be a good teammate. Work well with others, and you'll find success. And then surround yourself with the best. So key leaders inside of this world, Jack Welch, Others have always talked about surrounding yourself with the best people that you can. If you're the smartest person in the room and you haven't filled those gaps around you with people that essentially fill the gaps that you have, offset your shortcomings, you, you will never hit the success levels that you desire to hit. Um, I was, again, I was listening to some uh, John Huntsman deliveries and speeches, and he said the same thing. You know, he never wanted to be the smartest person in the room. He wanted to get a collection of people around him that were smarter than him. And I've, I've lived by this same value. I never want to be the smartest person on my team, and I never am, by the way. But I want people around me that can fill those gaps, that bring immense value to the team, that bring unique ideas and topics to the table, and they challenge the status quo to a, to a degree as well. So surround yourself with the very best. Make every moment count. So there's a great book out there that, that's uh, fairly, out fairly recently, last October, uh, called The Power of Moments by uh, the Heath brothers, Chip and Dan Heath. Um, encourage you all to read it, great read. But it's all about taking the mundane little moments in our lives, whether it's our work lives, whether it's our personal lives, or whatever, and making them extremely impactful moments. So. Think of you know, stupid things that people do every day. Just send somebody an email or just send somebody a text to say happy birthday. If this is a coworker, how, how good do they feel if I just send them a text? They get a million texts every day. But if I do something really special for them, you know, a, a handwritten note, a piece of their favorite cake, and I deliver that to them, pretty simplistic. But what a difference it can make. When you think about ideas and things that you can do to make mundane moments very special to other people, you can change the world and have a significant impact. Um, make every moment count. 
At MarketStar, we, we live by a mission called create great experiences for our employees, for our clients, for um, those end customers that we sell to, et cetera. And it fits hand in hand with this. We need to look for opportunities to sh reframe things, shift the paradigm, find ways to treat people differently and make every moment count. There are a lot of things that we just fly by and either because we're so busy at work and what we're doing, we just pass them by. We miss the opportunity to slow down, uh, pick up our heads, and find the opportunity to make a moment of brilliance for that person. So make every moment count. Who likes apple pie? Who doesn't like apple pie? Apple pie and a little alamode. Oh, there's a few hands here. All right, well, I guess I better put cherry pie up here next time or something else. Rhubarb. Who, who even knows what rhubarb pie is? Probably not very many. Uh, so don't be afraid to keep it simple. So if we put a whole bunch of salespeople, marketing people, and some engineers in a room, and we ask them to make apple pie, how complex do you think they could probably make it? We'd come up with 20, 30 different ways we could make apple pie, I'm sure. Don't be afraid to keep it simple. Simple isn't always cool in this day and age, right? People want to they want to be that smart key leader. They want to make sure that everybody knows they're the smartest person in the room, but don't be afraid to keep things simple. We, if there's one thing that's constant in business today, we try to overcomplicate everything. And thus, we lose a lot of traction. Uh, we become inefficient in what we're doing. Don't be afraid to keep it simple. Uh, this is something that has, I think, paid me in spades in my career is being able to boil things down and keep them simple. It's so easy to allow them to allow different uh, scenarios to become super complex and we struggle to find our path or our way through them. Just keep it simple. It's really easy. Continue to uh, learn, explore, and develop critical thinking. So this is my son in the uh, Wind River Mountains. For those of you that are here in Logan, this isn't that far away from you. But uh, earlier this year, I took him on a backpacking trip and made him learn some new things and explore some new things. Each of us needs to continue to learn and explore, challenge ourselves, and develop critical thinking skills. Uh, I mentioned that I had an opportunity to go to Japan and spend a, a year there working for a company. And I had no idea how different the Japanese business culture is. Granted, I'd lived there for a couple of years prior, but I didn't know how different the business culture was from the US. But I learned so many things in that internship that became a springboard for me later in my career about how to treat people, about how to engage with people in a different way, about how to listen. Probably one of the key things I learned from that internship was how to listen and, and it, to develop really strong listening skills, mainly because I had to learn the language, so I had to listen, right? But Take every opportunity you can to learn. I recently completed a, a senior management uh, training program called SMP through our parent company, Omnicom, at uh, Babson College, which is a very well-renowned uh, entrepreneurial school in the Boston area. And it was phenomenal. It's taught by Harvard Business School professors. It was a phenomenal experience for me and opened my eyes to a lot of different things that I hadn't been thinking of as a leader. Uh, emotional quotient, right? EQ and things we talk about in the emotional side of the house, but then also just le raw leadership skills. Continue to challenge yourself to learn. We, never, we should never stop learning. There's so much that we can learn from one another and from other ideals in our environments. So as a kid growing up, my father used to make me mow the lawn and weed the garden on a regular basis. And when I didn't do the job very well, I mean, how many of you liked weeding or mowing the lawn? If I didn't do the job well, this is what I heard time and time again. A job worth doing is worth doing well. So I would be back out there doing it again. Um, and uh, he, he pounded this into me, and I absolutely hated it as a, as a kid. I really did. Uh, but it's something that I've, I've really glommed onto heavily in my career that a job worth doing is worth doing well. This is a weird picture, I think, because I think of the person that had to uh, snow blow this road out. 
and how they must have had to take a lot of time to do this well and to clear that road because of the depth of the snow. But in our careers, we often take on roles and positions and different things where we may not love what we're doing at the moment, but keep this in mind. A job worth doing is worth doing well. Give it your all. You know, rise to the occasion. Show the leadership that you work for that you're capable of taking on tasks that maybe others won't and that you will rise above and, and that you will succeed in those mundane or tough situations. Uh, don't be afraid to do a job really well. All right. So those are some of the leader kind of career and leadership imperatives um, that are important to me that I wanted to share with you today. And I, I hope that there's some insights there for you and some things that, uh, that you're able to hang on to. I wanted to leave plenty of time today for Q&A, um, answer anything I can for you, and then I'll do a, a warm handoff to Brian Van Vliet from Pinterest as well. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Any questions? We've got two mics, so I've got a mic right here, and then Sarah has got a mic, so just go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll bring you a mic. Okay. Um, is this on? Okay. I'm, I'm Jared from BYU, if you want to know. And just curious more about MarketStar, uh, who are your competitors, and what distinguishes you from them? Mm, great question. And it was Jared? Yeah. Thanks, Jared. Good question. So. You know, MarketStar is kind of in a niche marketplace. We have a, I'll call it a smaller list of competitors, but a very defined list of competitors as well. Uh, there's a company in Denver called Service Source, a company out of Atlanta called Market Source, a uh, few different folks like that. Um, company in, also based in Parker, Colorado, called Teletech that has a division, used to be known as Ravana, that we compete with and do very similar things to what we do. Uh, but it's a niche space. When you think about larger kind of call centers, so I think Convergis had an operation here in Logan, uh, Teleperformance has operations in Salt Lake Valley. We don't play against those folks. In fact, we kind of sell against that in a different direction. Um, we're very niche in the sales side of the house and B2B sales specifically. So we don't do much of anything in the consumer space, um, consumer focused, retail focused. We're very much a B2B sales oriented organization, and that differentiates us quite significantly in the space. Go ahead and say your name, school, and your major. Hey, Paul. Uh, I'm Nick Graham from Weaver State University. I'm doing a double major in economics and Spanish. Uh, so, my question for you is. Um, at your, or when you were at our point in our lives, uh, what did you wish you knew in the business world and in the sales world when you were going through school and graduating, things like that? Great question. Go Wildcats. So early in my career, and I mentioned when I was at Weber State, I was also uh, attending, or I was also working at MarketStar for a couple of years. Um, it happens to be where my wife and I crossed paths. We didn't meet there, but we, uh, we happened to cross paths there. But early in my career, you know, if, if I could go back now, and what would I tell my, myself at this point? Um, I think some of it would still resonate in that gain a breadth of experience. Find opportunities to gain a lot of experience in different ways. So even as a salesperson, if you can get out and work for different companies and taste different things here and there in the sales world, it'll provide you a lot of value. Uh, I, I recently did a kind of a letter of recommendation or a write-up um, for one of our employees that was that's at Weber State that's uh, in a particular class and needed some guidance on some things, and I was helping, uh, helping her with this. But the thing that I said is find a sales opportunity that allows you to expand on the things that you're learning on and put them into practical use. So if you can leverage some framework that says, hey, I, could, I can work here and I can do this and I can put those things into use day in and day out and I can hone my craft and my skill over time, I think I could have done a better job of that um, when I was in your seat, which doesn't seem like it was that long ago, by the way. I mean, it's been a few years now, but it, it really doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Time flies. So, Gather the experience that you can. 
put yourself in a position where you can learn, learn, and learn new things, new skills, whether that's kind of retail, whether that's B2B, whether that's other sales opportunities. Find a breadth of opportunity and figure out what you do well and what you like. Not everybody loves retail type sales. Not everybody loves B2B sales. You need to figure out what works for you and what you're good at and then chase that. Hi, I'm Megan Barchi. I'm from Utah State. I'm doing a double major in business administration and marketing with a human resource minor. My question for you is what moment throughout your career or even just um, before your career starting in your college experiences and such really made you decide that this was the right path for you and kind of changed um, just kind of how you started progressing and these values that you came up with? Thank you. And it was Megan? Yeah. Thanks, Megan. Great question. Multi, multifaceted, but a really great question. So if I think back, uh, you know, what, what brought me here? And I think that some people would love to say that they had charted a course, and they were, here was their course, and they followed the path, and they were able to land there. But that's not me. Um, I, I did not know exactly how I was going to get to where I wanted to be. But I knew that I wanted to be successful, and I wanted to help a lot of people in my career, whatever it was that I did. Um, so my focus was business administration and marketing, and then obviously Jap the Japanese side of the house. So I focused a lot there, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it. Uh, but I found this niche in working with customers, working with people. I still had a passion for working with people, talking to people. It was something that I loved. And so I found an opportunity in an account manager type role, right? I was a business, weird title back then, it was a business line manager role. I don't know that we really use that title anywhere anymore. But I was working with a small team of salespeople, uh, something that none of you will know about, which was Priceline for gasoline. We were selling Priceline for gasoline products, which was you could find the best rate on gasoline via Priceline.com. No longer exists. Other things like it do. But I found this niche there where I was happy with what I was doing. I enjoyed it. And that's kind of care. It's sort of just become a ladder and it cascaded through my career and being able to take the experiences that I had and build on them. Uh, then I, I moved into leadership positions where I was traveling globally and working with international markets and setting up sales centers, customer service centers, technical support centers around the globe, uh, both in Asia, Latin America and elsewhere. And again, engaging with people of different cultures and different mindsets and helping them understand ideals and business principles that were important to me that led them to success and then seeing them grow. Now, at one point in time in my career, I had about 5,000 people globally inside of the organization that I managed. And it was breathy and it was, it was cumbersome at times, but it was awesome because we were seeing success and we built a framework for success that allowed these people to grow and develop. And my passion came in helping people succeed and seeing people succeed. And I still take a lot of pride and value in seeing others succeed and grow. I think I answered most of your question, maybe not all. Any other questions? No, let's use them. I think you get mic'd in, then it'll. Um, is it on? Yes, OK. Uh, my name is Dal McRae, and I'm a senior at Logan High, so I don't have a major. But um, <laughs> I was just wondering, are there any high school experiences that you are really glad that you did, or are there any that you regret that you didn't do, and do you have any advice for high schoolers heading into college in general? Ooh, great question. So if, how many of you guys are involved from Logan High that are here? How many of you are involved in the DECA program? Are you involved in that? No? So, so there's, a little, there's a little bit of that that uh, I see some guys back here saying all of you guys are, right? So there's, there's opportunities for you um, inside of high school that I never took advantage of, right? And I think you have way more opportunities today than I ever had the opportunity to take advantage of. So if there's opportunities for, I'll call it like debate, some de good, le good learning and dialogue skills where you're challenging thinking and having some healthy debate, that, that would be greatly successful in a sales career future looking. 
And then there's, there's also writing skills. So while in high school, sometimes we, you know, like to have some fun, do some different things. But if you can develop really strong writing skills, and Phil Mickey, who's a, a member of my team and um, runs marketing for us at MarketStar, would tell you writing skills for him are absolutely critical in what has vaulted his career. He's a phenomenal writer. So hone those writing skills. I should have done a better job at that, candidly. Um, but honing those writing skills and being very creative in terms of how you write being articulate in how you write and communicate, also pay dividends. So kind of the verbal and the written side of that would be good. And then just interpersonal, social. I think in this day and age, it's really easy for us to get locked away and not have those interpersonal and social skills that we need in the business world long term. So find opportunities, push yourself outside of your comfort zone, and be a social person. Get to get to interact with people and understand how to read nonverbal and verbal signals, things like that. I think that would be helpful. I'm Vincent Cook from uh, Weber State. My uh, major is professional sales. My question is, what does MarketStar actually do? Like, I, I think it's a valid question, Vincent. So, so we, said, we said we do outsource sales, right? Um, but that may not translate for everybody. So I had a bunch of logos up here. You remember all the logos that we splashed on the slide. So for each of those companies, we have individual sales teams, right? So we may have 10 or 15 or 20, maybe we have 100 people that are selling services or products for all of those different logos up there, if that makes sense. So, our revenue is generated from the sales or the services, I should say, that we provide to our clients. So when I talk about MarketStar providing $6 billion of value or revenue back to our clients, we're out, we're out selling, most of that being inside sales. So inside of a brick and mortar facility, if you will. But we do have about 300, 400 people who are field-based salespeople as well. All of these are full-time professional salespeople. And they're selling the products for these companies. And we have a fee, if you will, for our services, our people, our secret sauce, the processes and things that we put in place to help drive sales and revenue for these customers. And that's where we generate our revenue from. So we are an extension or an augmentation of the sales teams for these brands up here. In some cases, we may be their, their full sales team from end to end. Uh, but in many cases, we're an extension of it. We may be an extension just in the mid-market space. We may own all of the small, medium business space. Or we may even play up into the uh, enterprise space as well. And that's talking about the size of the company, and usually in terms of employees uh, that we would be working with or selling to. So historically, we've been very focused in the tech sector. So if you think about companies, legacy companies like HP, um, Dell, folks like that, Cisco, Avaya, a lot of hardware-based, right, product-based sales. But we've, we've pivoted and morphed and changed, and we're, we've really moved to where this year so far about 93% of the new brands that we've brought in are all in that SaaS or subscription-based ecosystem. So customers are no longer buying a single product, right, that box product. They're buying a subscription to a software or other things. It's a long answer, sorry. <laughs> but that's what we do. I think we've got one more question up here. How are we doing on time? Oh, go ahead. So my, my name is Mata Burkhart, and I'm a student here at USU studying economics and finance. Uh, my question for you, as you've gone throughout the course of your career, I'm sure you've had times where you've had to consider one opportunity over the other. Um, that's kind of the seat that we find ourselves in in our undergraduate opportunity is how to decide whether to pursue one opportunity over the other. And I'm wondering um, if you have any personal process on how you decide that. Mm, I like the question. I think everybody heard the question, but the question was, have you ever had a point in your career where you've had to choose one opportunity over, the, over another? And in, as an undergraduate, you know, how do we how do we measure those out? Uh, how do we determine what we should do? 
Uh, my, I, I do have a strong point of view on that, and I think that you need to look at opportunities and build, your, build a, a, a management framework, if you will, a personal management framework that you operate and live by and, and understand what's important to you. So I'll give you a good example, real world example of myself. Previous to Market Star, uh, I was in a role where I traveled about 75% of the time. I'm not sure my kids always knew who I was. I'd be gone for two and three weeks at a time. And I knew that I needed to make a fundamental shift. So for me, an opportunity knocked at the door and I weighed based on the management framework or the framework that I have and how I make decisions as a, as a person and as, and as a leader, I looked at that framework and said, what, what do I really want to do? And what fits me the best? What's good for my family? What's good for us long term? So there's financial implications there. And really, what, what is best for me? What fits the framework, the decision framework that I have in place for me? And then made a decision based on that. So understanding you know, how you make decisions, why you make decisions, and what's imperative or important to you is critical. All right, we'll take, looks like we're gonna take one more and then we'll uh, make a handoff here. So we've got one more question up front. My name's Andrew Coe and I go to Logan High School and I was just wondering if you had any sort of worries about doing business with Facebook given the whole testifying of Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress this previous summer. Just wondering if you had any worries about doing it. It's a good question. So do we have any, does Markstar have any worries about doing business with Facebook? Yeah, Paul, do you have any worries about doing business with Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> For any other reasons? <laughs> I love it, Brian. I love it. Um, from a security standpoint, uh, no, um, we don't. But they're, they're also holding us to a very stringent security stand, or security, I'll call it compliance and rigor as well. So there's a lot of things that we have to comply with. As you can imagine, given all that they've gone through, uh, they've got things locked down pretty tight to ensure that they don't have further Cambridge Analytica type scenarios with some of their uh, partners, which MarketStar would be in that case. So very stringent in terms of what we're able to see, what data we handle, and how we work. But that isn't new to us. Um, we're pretty very, we're very comfortable in working in a space where we're handling our clients' data and keeping it very secure. So I'm not, I'm not too nervous about that at all. All right, so with that, thank you for that last question. And uh, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and welcome Brian Van Vliet from Pinterest to the stage. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Got you now. Br Brian is, uh, Brian's gonna do two things. Number one, tell us a little bit about Pinterest, I think. But more importantly, for all of you here for the Sales Champion Competition, Announce the finalists. Finalists, right here. Hey, thank you all. I appreciate it. Hi. I'm going to make sure my zipper's not down or something with this thing. Mm -hmm. Just take it um, thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, particularly, thank you to the, to the participants in what is now officially the second annual sales champion competition. So awesome job. Is that, is that loud enough? Um, I work for a tech company. I can't do shit with tech. But um, so, sorry about the language. Um, so as Paul said, my name is Brian Van Vliet. I, I work with Pinterest. And I think I want to answer your what does Marcus R do question. <laughs> because to help you understand the relationship between Pinterest and Marcus R. So about... Two, almost two years ago, um, with like in a few weeks, it'll be two years officially. Pinterest came to MarketStar and said, "Like, we don't know how to sell Pinterest ads to SMBs." So, Pinterest had already had a what we call a growth team, which was handling the mid market, had a field team handling like the WalMarts and the Targets of the world, um, but didn't really have a strategy for how to acquire SMB advertisers, um, and so evaluated a few different vendors. I think you mentioned Ravana. Um, Pinterest had basically decided on Ravana, um, a market star competitor, but the, my predecessor at the time and, and his boss who were setting this all up 
figured they needed to check a couple boxes and visit at least one more vendor before going to their boss and saying, oh, we're going to launch this team at Ravana. Came to MarketStar. They were blown away by the talent level at MarketStar. And they were like, oh, man, like, I think we've got to go with MarketStar, even though it's in Ogden, Utah. And like, where is Ogden, Utah? Um, and, and so just, I was on the MarketStar side at that time. And um, I was on Paul's team, actually. And I left. Paul's team to go and launch that team at MarketStar, and we started with about 20 people, um, some of whom are here today still, and we started selling Pinterest ads, and we didn't know at all what we were doing, and we've worked closely with Pinterest, figured it out, team did really well, so we scaled to about 60 people in about six months in, and then we scaled to our current level, which is about 150 sellers at MarketStar. So we manage uh, ongoing spending advertisers, we acquire new advertisers, and we work through ad agencies to educate them on Pinterest and hopefully have them pitching and selling Pinterest ads as a strategy for their advertisers. So last year, having worked on the MarketStar side for about a year, year and a half, um, Pinterest offered me to convert and join Pinterest directly, which I did. So now I represent Pinterest on the Pinterest side, working with the MarketStar team day in and day out, full time. I, I, I office with them in Ogden. Um, so that's what MarketStar does. Does that answer the question? Okay. Um, so it's been a very strong and healthy relationship. This is this event that we've put on now as our second year. Um, Last year, it was just USU that participated. This year, we invited some other schools and got teams from a bunch of other schools. And it, it's just, it's like we like doing it, but the reason that we pay to sponsor it is just shameless recruiting. It's like, just, that's, that's it. Like, we just want to recruit people. Um, the last year's sales competition, we, it was really successful, which is why we expanded this year. We have, you know, a bunch of people from USU that came into our recruiting funnel. We hired a bunch of them, um, and, and it's been really successful. I'm going to embarrass her. She's going to hate it, but we actually have a participant from last year's competition here that now works on our team, and she was what we call an MVP, so it was like one of our top sellers. She's going to go to San Francisco. Her name's Jocelyn. She's there in the back. <laughs> they all looked at you at the same time, Jocelyn. Jocelyn. U USU grad. Um, we also have a few others, Ellie and Logan, that some of you up here already know, who both, Logan didn't participate, but Ellie actually was on the winning team last year and then joined our team shortly thereafter. We actually recruited Ellie before she officially graduated, so she had to like kind of commute and stuff, but Ellie's doing great on our team as well. Um, so we've had a lot of success in, you know, in being able to like reach into these schools. So last thing I'll say, I know you guys have been sitting for a long time before I announce the winners, because especially the competition, you have no choice but to wait and hear me out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you hostage with this little paper, piece of paper. Um, so the last thing I'll say is like, you know, Weaver State students are make up, have traditionally made up a, a decent chunk of Market Star employees um, for obvious reasons, proximity. It's like two miles away or whatever. Um, but it's, we haven't had as, as much uh, success or exposure with some of these other schools, including USU, until last year when we did this, and BYU, you know, in large measure, I'm sure, because of the proximity and those things. Um, and what has become a unique kind of uh, thing about our program in particular, and I'm sure it's probably true at other MarkStar programs too, I know it is on AdRoll, which, which is that like, Pinterest generally doesn't hire straight out of college. We're typically hiring people on our, directly on our team in San Francisco, in New York, in Seattle, um, with a few years of, of experience. Um, so hiring people away from Facebook and Google and LinkedIn and, and stuff like that. And, but with this MarketStar team now, our internal sales leaders are starting to be like, hmm, this is really interesting. Like, these guys have been actually doing the job for a couple of years. Um, 
our, their exact job of, of selling Pinterest ads. And so you know, my situation was a little bit unique. Um, but recently, and there's a bunch of our employees here who don't know this yet, so I'm not going to use names. But recently, meaning yesterday, uh, we, Pinterest, just made, our, made and was accepted our first offer to hire somebody off the MarketStar SMB team to come to San Francisco and join our sales team in San Francisco directly at Pinterest. Um, and so and the, the really interesting thing about it was that all of our finalists that we brought on site were all from MarketStar. So they were up against people who had been selling at Google, people who had been selling at Facebook. But the fact that they, A, knew Pinterest and can just jump right in and, and, and do the job the first day was like a huge advantage. B, they, we've, we've gotten a chance to see them do the job for two plus years, or one year. In this case, it was just over one year, one and a half years. So we know who, you know, what kind of work that these people do. So it's like this really, really effective recruiting ch channel for us because we can see them selling Pinterest ads for a year or two and, and, and see which ones are really good at it and willing to relocate and then hire them directly at Pinterest. And so I think what we're going to continue to see is more and more of that. Um, you know, what my advice to that, the, our mid-market sales manager was, you should just don't hire anybody external until you've hired all of them. Everybody who's, who's good at the job and who's willing to relocate from market stars. It's like it's such a perfect opportunity, right? They already know the product. So the reason I'm telling you this is just shameless recruiting, which is that like, for some of you who maybe wouldn't think about MarketStar because it's in Ogden or whatever other reasons, um, I think increasingly MarketStar is going to, as more companies from the Bay Area have you know, engagements with MarketStar, is going to be a perfect place for people in Utah. It's like, how do you go from Utah to San Francisco and like, have any kind of entree into a company like Pinterest or Google or Facebook? Um, we had one of our... SMB sales people that went directly to Facebook. We've had them in the final round interviews at Google. Um, and these are, like, I've worked with these companies a lot, and so I know what the kind of, like, pedigree that they normally look for. And it's, they're very, very competitive roles. So the, mark, the competitive advantage of coming and working on one of these sales teams, if you're interested in one of these companies like Pinterest, they don't care about Facebook, um, then Facebook ain't up here sponsoring this thing. Um, so if, if you're interested in, one of these, in, in one, joining one of these brands directly, it's, it ends up being a really attractive career path, and it's really attractive for us because we have a fully ramped salesperson on the first day, which is like, you can't beat that in recruiting. So, so come and talk to me about the MarketStar team at Pinterest if you're interested in either MarketStar or Pinterest. All right, so what you're actually waiting for, for those of you who are in the con competition. So I'm going to announce the finalist teams. There are four finalist teams. I believe, from what I understand, that the final round is going to be live streamed up in here. Um, so for everybody who's not on those teams, you can watch these presentations. I'm going to announce them. This is no particular ranking order. This is the order in which they will present in the, in the final round. So team one, UVU. So that's, I'm not going to say last name just so I don't butcher anybody. That's Kylie, Josh, and McKenna. Um, team two. So you can wait until I say the first names this time, and then you'll clap for them. All right, team two, USU four. And that is Lincoln, Bradley, Veronica, and Mike. All right, next team, BYU three. So that is Cynthia, Lizzie, Senna, and Lauren. And the final finalist team is BYU 1. And that's Jared, Daphne, and, oh, I should, should have got the name on this one, Carrie Ann? Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann, all right. Congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you all for participating. I was blown away by the quality of the work that we saw, um, especially given that you probably didn't know anything about Pinterest advertising before, before you started this competition. So thank you for all your work. Thank you for all your preparation. And we'll see you in the final round. Thank you guys so much for your help today.